Welcome back. We're still with the lead director of Center for Social Justice, Mr. Ezio Yekwere. Thank you for joining us once again. Thank you. Now, we left off on the issue of uh, uh, Nigeria's uh, borrowings and all of that. And, and I was trying to raise a question where the plan said that it is hoping, envisaging that the, the country can increase its revenue by $2 trillion in 2020. Now, how feasible is this, you know, amidst all the challenges that, that you were trying to talk about? It is feasible if they do what they say they will do. I mean, part of it is going to come from increased crude oil production. Hmm. And then there's also a lot of issues around borrowing. And that's what I was saying, that the borrowing is going to come more from external sources. So before now, we've had more of domestic debts than foreign debts. Now we're going to have more foreign debts. And this is coming at a time the Naira is fast losing value. So that will come with the huge exchange risks, you know. And then you ask yourself, what will we be investing on to make sure we'll be in a position to pay at the time payment falls due? Mm. So I foresee a situation where if we do not manage these debts that we intend to procure well, we are going to have a more complicated position, be in a more complicated position than we had before the Basanjo era of uh, debt relief. So what I expect to see should be a mixture of both domestic and foreign borrowing. And also the borrowing has to be targeted to key strategic sectors. And it's not everything that we must borrow. We must think innovatively. We must get ourselves out of the box because I don't even want to say think out of the box. Because once you enter the box, you're inside the box. Let's get out of the box first and see how we can leverage on the resources available here locally, not from some X, Y, big multimillionaires alone, seeing what we can tap from the Nigerian people to invest in this infrastructure so that they become more locally owned rather than being financed by debts or some huge foreign investor that comes here to pick up the Naira and seeks to convert them to dollar at the end of the month or the year, which puts more pressure on the Naira and further reduces its value. So I think that the important thing is to have a clear view mm. of where you are going and also to have a proper analysis of the metrics of what takes you there and what the scenario will be if you get there. Not just making projections because they look sweet to the ears and uh, everybody wants you to say something. You simply make it without thinking it through because that's what I see happening. For instance, I didn't quite see a lot about the automobile policy which was started by the previous administration. People have said it. Some great economists have said it that you pick up issues one by one. Mm -hmm. The Obasanjo government and later subsequent governments invested a lot or gave a lot of policy directives on the cement, in the cement sector. And we see where we are today. Although the price of cement haven't crashed, but at least we have attained local self-sufficiency. Yes, go ahead with rice, wheat, tomato. Also, go ahead with the automobile industry. Grow it to such a day that most of the cars we drive here today, today will drive will be really assembled or made in Nigeria. So these are the kind of things you have to move fire on all cylinders, move in all sectors, make sure you carry all the sectors holistically, and then you can be sure of your growth, not just targeting one area and leaving out the others. Can Nigeria become a major producing nation? Of course we can. If we tap the resources, the greatest resource we have, mm -hmm. the greatest resource we have is not the oil. It's not the cocoa, it's not the groundnut, it's, not, it's the human resource. So what can the government do to incentivize the young people, to those with a brilliant ideas, to begin to move towards innovation and move from research to actual production of goods and services that will help grow the economy? I think that is one key thing we also have to ask. Did, you, did you also ask the question of infrastructure? I mean, power, for instance. I mean, recently we saw the innovations... Expo, where a lot of people who've got who has got indigenous talents, you know, came came forward and, and they brought up uh, brought up things that we saw that could move the nation economically and otherwise. But infrastructure, in terms of power, is still a major hindrance. How is it possible? How is it feasible to become a major producing country in the light of this? Yeah, we've, we said it before. You cannot move manufacturing forward. Hmm. You cannot even move services forward until you get your power sector right. And we are talking of only 10,000 megawatts. That's why I'm saying there's no ambition. We should be talking of 15, 20,000 megawatts, real megawatts that are available, not just like 
yes. our ability to produce, and then we tell stories about, oh, there's no, we finish building a plant before we remember the pipelines for gas have, been, have not been laid, or before somebody bombs a pipeline and then we say there's no more gas to fire. So the, 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 the reforms have to be holistic. If you are talking about building new plants, you must think about their sources of fuel. We must also think deeply about renewable energy, okay, as an alternative platform to open up communities, bring the energy that is required for industries, farms, offices to grow. And also, I don't see, for this program to succeed, it must be properly sold to Nigerians, not just people in Lagos or in Abuja or in the capitals. And Nigerians have to buy into it and begin to see their place, their rule. What can they do in their little corner for the realization of the big goals and the big picture of this program? Well, thank you very much for your thoughts on Dateline Abuja. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. Thank you.